Hey friends, Jill here. Welcome back to Whispering Willow Farm. I am in the kitchen today. It has been raining all weekend and really just nasty. So I'm in here. Uh, Nathan and I are trying to have a relaxed day. Uh, neither one of us like know how to relax well. So he's been in the kitchen cooking all day and I'm in here about to make bread. That is something I've been wanting to do is to create a sourdough playlist and kind of show you guys um, some of the recipes that I'm making every single week, just how simple they can be. They do take a little bit of time, but the recipe I'm going to make today is actually pretty simple. It is a focaccia, uh, which is actually an Italian uh, bread. I'll show you guys what it looks like. My original sourdough recipe, like when I just make a traditional loaf, comes from a Lane food pod. Um, but my bagels and the focaccia and some of the other specialty breads uh, that I make come from this book. It's called Artisan Sourdough Made Simple by Emily Rafa. I mean, it's a beginner's guide. Everything in here is really basic um, and really easy to follow instructions. So what I'm gonna do right now is feed my starter. Um, and so anytime I use my starter, I'll feed it before I store it in the fridge. So say I've got a recipe that calls for 50 or 100 grams of sourdough starter, I'll take that and then I feed it back 50 grams of water, 50 grams of flour, and then store it. That way it has uh, like it stays active so you guys can see all of those bubbles in there uh, what that means is that it is active so I'll actually discard this by about half and then refeed it so I've got this quart mason jar over here that stays in the fridge in my discard uh, we can use this to make crackers we can use this to make pancakes waffles uh, this will also be something that will be um, on the sourdough playlist is what you do with the discard we have uh, fed it to the pigs before but I've been saving it. It's also pretty active. There's a lot of bubbles in there as well So it's good to use it'll store in the fridge just fine uh, So right now, let's just discard and then refeed You guys can see here I have discarded quite a bit so there is very little uh, left It's probably about up to here uh, so very little is left what I'm gonna do now is just grab my scale one thing I will note when you are working uh, with sourdough, you will be working in grams and not pounds and ounces. Um, and so that is something that was new for me, kind of took me a minute. And so I recommend just getting a scale that you can change the unit uh, to grams. And so it'll do it all for you. I have no idea. Nathan bought me this scale a long time ago when I used to make uh, herbal blends. And so it had a bowl that sit on it. Um, now I just stick my bowl on here and use it and it works just fine. So I'm gonna put the mason jar on the scale and I turn it on and it should be at zero which it is I use the King Authors unbleached bread flour uh, you can use whatever your preference is but I'm gonna add 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water all right now that you have weighed out your water and your flour you're just gonna mix it I actually got this sourdough spatula from ballerina farm and I love it one thing when it comes to sourdough that you want to note if you're using like just a stainless steel spoon or a butter knife or something like that immediately wash it off because when it dries it dries like concrete if you get it uh, in your sink make sure that you're immediately wiping it off if you get it on your countertop whatever that might look like uh, because it does dry just like super super hard uh, Nathan's giving me the stink eye right now because I've had we've had to have a few conversations um, but I don't know if it's like what they uh, oil this spatula in but literally it comes right off and it really has kind of been a change a game changer so I'm just mixing it pretty good you guys can see the lights a little weird in here um, all right so now what I'm gonna do I'm going to put the lid on. Now, this time of year, which is typically when I'm making sourdough, it's cold. Um, and so, if you add some heat to it, it'll speed up the process. So, if I'm not in a hurry to make the sourdough, I'll usually do this in the afternoon, say 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'll just let it sit on the counter overnight, and by the time I get up in the morning, usually it's to the top of the jar, it's active, it's airy, it's got all those bubbles in it that you want, and then I can just start the process for sourdough. If for some reason I think, you know, the beginning of the morning, oh man, I really want some sort of bread tonight and it's a bread like a focaccia that I could do in a day, I will stick it on a heat mat and then I will put a tea pitcher on top of it. And so what that would look like 
is I keep my seedling heat mat right here in the kitchen. I would pop it on, plug it in, turn this over, and this just kind of traps that heat. It kind of makes like a mini greenhouse essentially and warms everything up and speeds that process up um, quite a bit. You'd be surprised how fast. Um, if you don't want to go through the work of like a heat mat, maybe you don't have that, you can stick it on top of your refrigerator where like the motor's running um, and that works a lot. Uh, since I'm not going to be making the bread actually today, this will be bread that we make tomorrow and I'll finish this video. I'm just going to leave this on the counter overnight and I will show you guys the process of it growing. Good morning guys, it is the next morning and as you all can see, I have got one very active starter. Now one thing I do wanna point out is you're gonna see lots of different recipes. A lot of the bulk fermentation happens overnight and that is easy. I've kinda of got myself on a schedule where I'll feed my starter in the afternoon um, and then it'll be ready like and then I can do the first step of my bread process and stick it in the fridge or maybe it's gonna bulk ferment overnight on the counter. But know that not all the time are you gonna have that really nice sourdough schedule. So for this recipe, I'm gonna add my starter, my water, my honey, my flour, my salt, and then I'm supposed to just let it sit on the counter overnight. I don't really wanna do that because we wanna have focaccia bread with dinner. And so what I'm gonna do is that's where I'm gonna bring this heat mat in and I'm gonna mix it all together and I'm gonna turn the heat mat on, I'm gonna put a tea towel on over it and it's gonna just speed up that bulk fermenting process. As long as it is doubled, which usually it will, the focaccia only takes like 25 minutes to bake, very hands off, there's no lifts and folds. So I should be able to start this process, stick it on the heat mat. We've got uh, Christmas errands to run today and then by the time I get home, closer towards dinner, I should be ready to start um, the next few processes and so I just want to let you guys know on the front end there is liberty when it comes to that you can manipulate the recipe a bit um, I have found that sometimes it is easier to stay on my schedule but in instances like this it just didn't work out so for the focaccia bread I'm going to add 50 grams of water is what the recipe calls for I always add more I really like that sourdough uh, taste and that comes from the active starter so so I usually add, depending on how big my starter is, mine's kind of fell a little bit, I'll probably add around 70 grams if I have that much. Check that out though. That is amazing. All right, so I have my bowl. This is, you can use anything. Um, you guys know I am a pottery lover and collector, so all of my bread bowls are pottery bowls. This one came from Old Dog Pottery. It's actually a jumbo bowl, so I can make like four loaves of bread um, in this one bowl. So I know that they're gonna have some of these available, I think, pretty soon, so I'll link their stuff down below. You guys can see what they have, but the bowl doesn't matter. It's whatever you have on hand will work totally fine. I've got it set on my scale here. I'm going to turn it on, make sure it's zeroed out. Now I'm going to add my starter. All right, so I ended up getting around 85 grams, which is totally fine. What I, you guys can see, I still have a little bit left in here. I'm gonna immediately go back and refeed this. So I'm gonna do 50 grams of water, 50 grams of flour, and I'm gonna pop it in my fridge. Then when I get ready to use it again, I'll do that discard process and refeed. And that's just so that all of the cultures in here have stuff to feed off of. They're feeding, they're feeding off the flour um, and everything like that. So I have zeroed out my scale again, and I'm going to use 375 grams of cool water. We just get this out of the Berkey and add it in. Okay, I was a little over and that's okay. All right, so I have added my 375 grams of cool room temperature water. Um, now I'm gonna add 20 grams of honey it can be whatever type of honey you have on hand this is the only recipe i use that calls for honey or sugar or anything like that once you've measured it all out and it's in your bowl you're just going to take whatever uh, type of utensil you're using and you're going to whisk it together really well and now we're going to add our flour and our salt and combine it and then this is when it's just going to go on uh, the heat mat so we're going to add 500 grams of bread flour, which I have the King Authors, and we're gonna do nine grams of salt, and I'm just using fine um, sea salt. All 
All right, now that you have done that, the fun part comes in. Now you get to use your hands and just get dirty. This is one of my favorite things to do. I do always recommend that you have clean hands when you do this. And then you're literally just gonna take your hand. I kind of have a movement that I do here. I just go from around the bowl, make sure I get it good and incorporated. You guys can see here it's pretty rugged um, and rough and that's okay that's how it's supposed to be so you're not going to try to get it in a smooth ball or anything like that we'll do that later um, in some of the different steps that are to come so that's what it looks like alrighty so I am going to plug in my heat mat I've got a damp tea towel that I have wet I'm just going to throw over it and then I'm gonna set it there. And I'm gonna do some holiday Christmas shopping and we're gonna come back and we're gonna start the next step in this process. You guys can see there are moments where you're having to be hands-on, but all in all, this is a very hands-off approach to sourdough. The traditional loaf, which I'll do a recipe, um, a video on that as well. I'm coming in every 30 minutes and doing lifts and folds over the period of like a couple hours. Um, and that's just the recipe that I use. So this one I really like because it can be super hands-off. I can kind of start something, go for the day, come back, do another step, and it just doesn't seem daunting. So, so far, I hope you've stayed with me. So far, I hope you're encouraged that you can actually do this. You can make some daggum good sourdough bread, and it doesn't have to be like the traditional loaf that you can sit, that you usually see. Uh, there is a lot of ways you can explore and play around with it, and I've had a lot of fun. So, I'll catch you guys back here in a little bit. All right guys, it has been several hours that my bread has been fermenting and rising on the heat mat. Um, so I really just want it to have doubled in size, especially if I am, you know, like I kind of don't have my schedule right. So I didn't let it rise overnight, which is why I put it on the heat mat, like I had mentioned. So it has definitely doubled in size. I'm also going to take the uh, camera off and show you guys. You'll sometimes start to notice that there's bubbles that come up on the top. That's a good indication uh, that your bread is ready as well. You guys see all those nice bubbles so my bread has certainly doubled in size now we are ready to move on to the next step so now that your bread is ready to go you need to grab a sheet pan I have this just 11 by 6 I'm not really sure that it matters I think you could probably uh, bake this in a pan that was bigger or smaller this is just the only type of sheet pan that I have on hand then you're gonna take your olive oil we are using this garlic infused olive oil this is a really important part to cut. You're gonna wanna make sure that you are coating your sheet pan very, very heavily. You wanna make sure that you wash your hands and you're gonna go through and just make sure that you have it uh, coated on the sides and the bottom really, really well. So I am definitely heavy handed uh, when it comes to this because otherwise when you bake it, it makes it really, really difficult uh, to get out. So I put a lot in here <laughs> um, and I do find that it is easier when you do that. Now that I have all of it coated, I'm gonna add just a little bit more, because like I said, this does, one, this is a garlic infused oil, so it makes the bread just taste really, really good. Um, but then it does just make it a lot easier uh, when I go to get the bread out. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my bread and get it out of the bowl, and I'm gonna flop it. You see how well fermented that is? I'm gonna just take it, flop it into the pan, it's not supposed to have any structure or anything like that, so it really is just going to look like a big old blob, and that is okay. All right. All right. So once I have my blob in the sheet pan, I'm going to turn it this way, and then I'm actually just going to flip it over and make sure that both sides are coated really good in that olive oil. Now you're gonna see that I'm not really trying to make it take on a mold or anything like that. I'm just kind of stretching it to fit the pan um, a bit better. So I have unplugged my heat mat because I do not need it any longer, but I'm just gonna take my sheet pan, stick it back here. I am gonna put my towel back over it. 
All right, so now that I have it setting back here, um, covered up, I'm gonna wait. You can wait anywhere from like an hour to two hours. I've done as little as an hour, and I've done all the way up to two hours. Um, it doesn't really change the structure of the bread. I have noticed really how long I let it sit just depends on my time <laughs> and where I'm at with time. So right now it's almost five o'clock. Um, I know that we're gonna be eating dinner before seven. This is gonna take a little bit to bake as well. So if I waited the full two hours, I wouldn't actually have the bread made about the time we would need it for dinner. So I'm gonna set my timer for an hour and then we're gonna come back and do the last and final steps of making the focaccia bread, which happened to be my favorite. One of the really cool things you can do and get creative here, same with just a traditional sourdough loaf, is there's all these different flavors if you're making a traditional sourdough loaf, same with the focaccia, but you can actually decorate it and it's called bread art. And I have a lot of fun uh, just like Googling and Pinteresting all these different bread arts. And so today I'm gonna attempt to make some flowers on there uh, with some grape tomatoes and some parsley and so I'm hoping fingers crossed that it turns out really good but if you are like me and you like to be creative and like express yourself through baking or food or like growing food outside in a garden or whatever that looks like uh, that's a really fun opportunity to be able to do this and so that is something that I have been kind of dabbling into more as I've been learning and expanding my knowledge about sourdough and it's been really fun uh, so you guys will get to see my new creation hopefully I don't mess it up but stay tuned all right friends now it is the fun part it has been an hour. I took my tea towel off. Now we're going to put indentions in the focaccia bread. Um, it's actually really simple. All you're going to do is just take your hands and make these little indentions. All right, so I use all my hands and I'm just pressing down. I've got a major cut on my finger right now. You guys can see it's kind of creating these air pockets and when I'm doing that I'm trying to just stretch it into the corners a bit. All right, and she's created some air pockets. You should be able to see that. You guys can see some of those air bubbles coming up. It's kind of what traditional focaccia looks like. Now's the fun part and I get to decorate it and just kind of play around with whatever flavor profiles I like. In the past, I have done rosemary and garlic and what that looks like is taking a garlic clove, uh, cutting it in half and putting the actual cloves in there and just pressing it down. Uh, today I told you I'm gonna be making some art with it and so I have got uh, grape tomatoes, I've got parsley, I have chives, um, and then the cherry tomatoes, the chives, and the rosemary is going to just be for decor. So let's get busy. This is gonna be the grass.
Alright, so now that I have decorated it, I have some flaky um, sea salt that I'm just going to drizzle over the top of this. This is kind of your preference on how much you want. We prefer kind of salty bread, so I kind of am heavy handed with this a bit. But there is going to be the flavors from the rosemary and the parsley. I have my oven set on 425 degrees. And then I'm going to put this in there for about 20-25 minutes. Uh, I don't really like mine super dark, just kind of golden on the top. So that's going to be preference on how long you let yours go. Um, but now it will make its way into the oven. Back up, June. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. That is about <laughs> to go in my tongue tongue. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look be there. It's so pretty and it's about to get wrecked. Alright you guys, we just got done eating dinner. Nathan made this hamburger meat, gravy, onion and cabbage soup. Is that what we're calling it? <laughs> it was a, it was a, a collage of stuff. And so that was really easy. I know that it kind of took a couple days from feeding the starter to actually making the bread. But as far as hands-on time, the focaccia is really a hands-off uh, sourdough, especially compared to a traditional sourdough loaf. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that it encouraged you guys that you can make it yourself. I will have the recipe posted down below in the book um, that I bought that has this recipe in it. But thank you guys so much for hanging out. I'll talk to you soon.